Many animals that we've seen sitting on these wealtherias and many of the other plants have disguised themselves as bird droppings. And I think that's what this has done. I think that's what its general modus operandi is. It is not disguised when you look at it on the leaf. And I think people just don't recognize it for what it is. I don't know if you can see there, but its antenna are waving frantically in the wind as it tries to pick up different things. Probably uses them to orientate itself according to the gravity that it can feel. It's staring straight down the barrel of the lens now. It's trying to pick up pheromones, a sense of why it is that it's being picked up and what it is being picked up by. And now, of course, it's thinking, oh goodness, I'm on television. I need to try and look smart. And if we're very lucky, what it will do is clean its antenna. Oh, it spotted a fly on my hand. Oh, the fly flew off. Just having a bit of a stretch. Look at the vicious claws on that thing. Isn't it cool? Now you will find, there we go, it's now washing its face because it knows it's on TV. You'll find that there's rather strange four limbs that look like little sort of boxing limbs are almost certainly developed or adapted to catching a specific kind of prey. Now what kind of prey that is, I couldn't begin to tell you. But the way it looked at that fly that came and landed on my hand indicated that perhaps it might be flies. There's another fly. Look. Oh, no. I'd love to see one of these things nail a fly. This is just fantastic. I'm being bitten by another fly. And I must tell you, the ticks and ants are out in profusion at the moment. We can hear lions also calling to the deep south of where we are. They're not on this reserve. No sound or sign of any leopards just yet. Isn't that wonderful? There's the fly. Come on, go and fetch it. Go on. Go and get it. The fly is biting me. You need to try and catch it. I'm afraid I have to frighten the fly away. It's biting me. Go on. Look, look. It's landed right next. It's caught. It's caught. It. It's caught it. That was astoundingly fast. This is amazing. The speed with which this mantis swung round and grabbed it with those hooked and spiky forelimbs was astounding. The fly is still struggling, but no fly. Your day is up. Today is the day that you meet the fly maker. Mantis, you are my new best friend in the world. Oh, this is really quite astounding. Fly is going to its doom head first. The mantis has grabbed it. Those four limbs are so spiky that it is now impossible for the fly to move. It's totally pinned. Its legs on either side of the right hand limb. And the mantis is now eating the fly head first. It's eaten off its eye. It's eaten off the one eye. I think it's going for the next one now. Yes, indeed, the head is now removed. Good stuff. The fly has stopped twitching. No, it's still twitching away. Now, I know this might sound a little bit gruesome. I mean, we... We wouldn't describe a lion kill like this, but then, of course, the impala and waterbuck and things that the lions kill don't tend to offend us like flies do. 
Yes, the eye is definitely seeming to be some sort of mantis delicacy. Mmm. Ooh, yes, there it goes. The eye is being devoured. Yep, swallowed. You see that, Vim? The eye is now being swallowed. This is just too special. Watch out, there's another fly there. And I think what you'll find is that the shell will not be eaten. I think now that the head is gone and the eye, which is obviously quite nutritious, has been grabbed and sucked dry, I think it'll probably suck the rest of the abdomen dry from the top. Although it seems to be consuming the whole thing. The head is now completely <laughs> removed. I was going to tilt it slightly. You might be able to see a bit better. How's that, Vian? Gee whiz, what a sighting this is. Now the fly has no head, so although one of its legs is still twitching, another fly came nearly met its maker there. Oh, you clever mantis, you are having the best breakfast, aren't you? Thank you very much. Now, unfortunately, there are another seven billion where this one came from. So it would be very nice if you could um, deal with them too. No need to finish this one, you could just catch another. And I'm sure you must be getting some wonderful screenshots of this. There's another fly sitting now, doesn't realize how close to its doom it is. Would you like me to come closer, Vim? How's that? Oh. I mean, that is just so cool. So there's no venom attached here, it's just pure force. And Janelle, as if to sort of preempt me, you said, are there any venomous mantids? Not that I know of, Janelle. It's n they're adapted to be physically much more intimidating than their prey. They've got those vicious spikes on the front legs. And they're on the, I mean, the joints of the front legs are sort of elongated. So the second segment, which contains the sort of powerful or longest spikes, the white ones that you can see on this mantis, that's the longest segment. And then the next segment, which is, I think, normally quite short on most insects, is long and it's also got spikes. So this fly was clamped between four sets of spikes two each on each front leg, between the third and second segments. And there was no ways once it had been grabbed. There goes the wing. Mmm, <laughs> oh no, didn't like the wing, just chewed it off there. Now I'm really, I would so love to see this under the microscope because that would really be fantastic. It would be the stuff of nightmares because of course this is how they design and build alien creatures for alien TV shows. It's those sort of four or five different mouth parts or f four or six different mouth parts consuming bits and pieces like this that to, at sort of a macro scale look so very intimidating. There comes the sun onto our little mantis. He's eaten the legs or she's eaten the legs. Oh, this is just amazing. I'd love to see a slow motion replay of that, of the mantis turning and grabbing a fly. And there's another fly now standing on the mantis's back. They really are not very bright, these flies. But I'll tell you what, I don't think, I think you'd need a camera that shot about a thousand frames a second to be able to see it clearly because the speed with which it moved was quite astonishing.